Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I just want to let you know that I have updated my startup file on Gumroad with a more recent version of my favorite material. It's something I've been working on recently with the Alien Embryo project that you may or may not have watched the video for. Just to have a quick look in here, what the material does is it allows you to get a kind of highly detailed PBR type procedural material that works around any object. I've been using it a lot for sculpts and statue type things. And then there are additional layers. There's a subsurf layer and a transmission layer. And these are controlled by masks which are generated from a geometry proximity. So on the default object here, I've got the geometry proximity curve geometry node. So this is providing the information. But if you wanted to transfer this to other objects, which is quite likely the case, you would need to apply this geo node to the type distance sub and distance trans into these fields to establish the attributes. And in that geometry nodes tree, you want to assign the distance sub and distance trans objects, which we can see here. In this case, they're just two spheres. So that when we do plug in either the subsurf or the subsurf and the transmission from the mix shader, we get the influence occurring. So when we move that geometry proximity around, we can have that proximity to find the physical parameters of the object. So if you're brand new here and if you haven't seen that alien embryo project, I do recommend the video because without seeing that, what I've just said will probably sound quite confusing and weird. So I'm going to show you another demonstration to hopefully outline why this is a powerful material and why I've now decided to move it up in priority. So it's actually just a part of my startup file now. So I'm in another experimental file that I worked on alongside the Alien Embryo project. And what you can see is here we have a statue from no-3d.at on Sketchfab. They take lovely scans from statues in Austria, I believe. And the material applied to this is completely procedural. And as you can see, it's fantastic for getting like this curvature definition. So there's a combination of pointiness and AO and some subtle details that are being generated there. That's really Realistically, like this part of the material. Curtis, zoom into the nodes. No, you've got to buy me a coffee if you want that. Okay, this is a fair exchange of educational value. So that section of it can be whatever you want. It could just be a regular principle BSDF. You could throw in any noise texture you want. It doesn't really matter. The point is that afterwards, we're then mixing it with subsurface and transmission. So you can notice here that we've got this color bleeding away from like the core of the object. And in a way, it looks kind of jade-like. In this case, on the object, I have my geometry node. It's named differently in this file because this was a test file. But in this case, the proximity is pointing towards a sphere object. So if I select that sphere object and move this around, you can see that where I move it, the effect or the, like the color, the light bleeding through the object changes. Now that harsh line there is due to the fact that I'm imposing transmission and subsurf from the same object, but we do also have control over the ramps. So for example, if I amped up the transmission, you can let more light bleed through, likewise with the subsurf as well. So the whole thing becomes a bit more translucent. What would be more appropriate is if I split these into two objects. So we go sphere, I'm gonna name this one sub and sphere trans. So let's assign trans to the other one. Now I'm gonna delete some of the extra geoprox, move this one a bit further away. Actually, this is wrong. That needs to be sphere trans. There we go. So now what's happening here is I've got one set of geometries defining where the object should be subsurf and one defining where it should be transmission. So at this point, if you're asking what's the point in doing this geometry wise, it's because the amount of information or the number of techniques that we'll be able to employ using this proximity data in geometry nodes is going to be a little bit insane, especially going forwards as geometry nodes progresses. Also, I wanted to use it for sculpt objects. So as I'm changing things procedurally, what working with UVs and texture based objects is just not really applicable. More so than that, if you wanted to find complex shape gradients in the shader editor, that's going to be really ungainly, should we say. So having a geometry proximity would be great. Also, we could technically, or in theory, apply grease pencil curves, which would be much more easier to edit than convert to meshes procedurally than use those for geometry nodes. So yes, this is not very beginner friendly because my startup file on Gumroad, like the point of sharing it is this is my genuine startup file. So as a self-proclaimed, more advanced user of Blender, it's going to be a little bit complicated to use because there's a bit of a skill requirement behind it. But let me just show you a little you know, demonstration of some potential here. So let's say I took the subsurf layer of this material and I made that black. So it looks far more physical. Individually, I can control like the subsurf value of that as well, which would just allow a little bit more bleeding around the edge. I can then change the color of the transmissive elements if I wanted. Likewise, don't know why you'd want to do this, but you can make it emissive. Maybe you've got some kind of cool effect you want to do with that. We could filter the boundary of the fall off with a noise either in the geometry nodes. So we could mix like a noise in there or after the mask has been imported into the shader editor. In theory, I'm going to try something I haven't done yet. Let's sculpt this proximity for the transmission. Let's go dynamic topology. 
five for relative detail should be okay. Snake hook. Let me get rid of that asset browser. So let's like curve this around a bit. It will be quite a lot of you know, uh, geometry. So it will be quite slow for GeoNodes to calculate. So ideally, if you're doing this, you would probably want to have it as decimated as possible. You see what I'm doing here? And I've just saved that in case I lose it as well. So let me decimate that a bit just to make this a bit more performant. Let's apply that. So you see, we've got this kind of wrapping around shape going on. Now the fall off may be too much to start with, obviously. So let's bring back the curve. Okay, so we can see that it's starting to work where we have the closest elements. In this case, there's a kind of bridge over the arm coming down here and you see where that end is touching there. I'm starting to make that transmissive. Let me set the origin to 3D cursor. And if I brought that in a bit closer, moved it back a bit. What we're now seeing is how that branching shape changes the surface properties as it gets close. So we've got like a top of the arm here getting close to the head over there. So now this guy is looking a bit transmissive, but it's still keeping in that original physical like pointiness curvature AO detail because it's layering up the material together. Now, I always wanted like the perfect sculpt object material which was kind of dream born from when I was learning to do sculpting in Blender back in like 2016. I was always so disappointed with just how like I couldn't get anything to look good. Sometimes I felt like the sculpt looked cool, like in terms of a matte cap or just the viewport view, but there was just something kind of disappointing about it. And especially recently when working on that kind of exobiology alien embryo project, I thought this would be a good opportunity to try something that I haven't really done before. As you can see, I'm just playing around with like the parameters of the different areas now. And what I ended up with was a material that can do pretty much everything I wanted. So step one, it's already just like a perfect material for previewing sculpt details. Actually, I can look around that here. It's not too overwhelming, like the curvature doesn't look too blurry or weird and the high frequency details that are procedurally added on make it look far more like a realistic material. We can add the subsurf on top of that without the transmission and that's fine. It basically just gives us like some color variety again on a more complex gradient, something that'd be different to define just with vectors in the shader editor and finally the transmission which in this case is strong because we created such like a complex you know all-encompassing sculpt here but again tonally that can all be turned down so you get these really complex interactions with the material where you have like sharp curvature details blended in with the color change from the subsurf blended in with this extra change with the transmission from that you know you can get creative so for example from this perspective a little bit of the bloom along the edge of the horse this will make a nice social post we could add in some volume if we wanted potentially as well. I'm using my physical lighting setup for my afterglow work, so maybe I can experiment with that a bit, get some new styles going. Another bit around a rim maybe. Let's punch that up a bit. So like I said, with these combinations of techniques, you know, the physical lighting and like geoprox material defining the properties of the shader, there is a higher skill ceiling, if that's even the right term to use. Rather, it is, you know, a bit untraditional, so it's a bit harder to work with. But if you can figure it out, it's worth it because there's a lot of like cool variety you can get. Literally, I don't know what I'm doing. As I'm just talking, I'm just messing around. I'm trying to like discover new, new angles for things. All right, so what else is included in that startup file? Well, in the compositor, we've got like a default bloom setup and I've got my denoise mix node. So this is what I use all the time when doing renders because I don't like to remove all of the noise when I do render, but I like to have a control over how much there is. So what this does is it mixes the original image output of the render with a denoised version based on a factor between zero and one. So in this case, I have it set to 0.8 by default and you can think of that as 80%. I do not recommend having that plugged in while you have the compositor active in the viewport because it will slow down your viewport. Sometimes it's quite easy to forget about that and think, God, why is my scene so slow? Because you're denoising every frame, sometimes possibly on top of previous denoising if you've got that active, like in your render settings. In the text editor, I've always had this file called resolution and frame rate reference. And a lot of people seem to like this. Uh, I've got quite a few comments about that. It's literally just a tiny file that just has some resolution references for like typical screen 16 by 9 ratios what ultra wide is in this case things like 2560 by 1080 which youtube is compatible with if you want to do like cinematic things square resolutions so you know one by one ratios one to eight two five six five twelve etc and then frames per second references with frames per minute because sometimes if you're working it with timelines not even in blender sometimes you know you need to make a little calculation about the number of frames like to time it properly the scene has a 
a physical lighting setup like this, again, reminiscent of my Afterglow work, you can pretty much just slap any old object in here, apply the physical definition material, which is the default one, and it should look good. I don't know if I've got anything available here. I mean, I know I've got my messy Warmer Castle statue. That's already got like an actual scan material on it. The problem with this one is this is the non cleaned up version and I do have a re-sculpted cleaned up version but as you can see even though it's a completely messy geometry the material is doing what it can to make it look good so it still does so you can like I said just throw in pretty much anything into this startup file and you'll get something that looks acceptable I mean look at all that you know detail on the back The we wouldn't even consider detail we'd consider an error but even still looks good so yeah, that's available. Feel free to pick it up if you want. Otherwise, consider supporting me on Patreon. You will be able to access the Alien Embryo Project. If I go to my website, Members Lounge, Blender Art Files and Experiments, here we can see the Alien Embryo Style Project. So this is where the work on that material came from, but there are other things for you to download and have a look at even like elsewhere, even like in the tools and add-on section, we've got the MRI visualizer and flipbook packer tool. By signing up to the Patreon as well, you will be helping to increase the number of hours I spend every month working on free projects. But you can also sign up for free to get monthly updates on what I've done throughout the month. It's a little bit like a newsletter in some way. So thanks for watching everyone. If you made it this far through the video, put a rock emoji in the comments if you want to take part in our emoji tradition. Otherwise, have a great day and I'll see you next time.